just gonna mark the steer tube and uh, get it in the vise to cut it. Uh, it's been rolling, what are you doing? Okay, so this is a really exciting build. Personally, I wouldn't mess with oh, it. No, it's it's like, falling. Yeah. Oh no. Oh. All right, so I got probably one of the most. Can I help? Yeah. I would just say something like, just got in the shops first, allied BC40. I'm, been, I have to say exactly. Okay, been, right. yeah. My new bike came in today. This is gonna be one of the best mountain bikes um, that you can get, and it's gonna be the best one I've ever had. Hopefully it is. And also the first allied BC40 that we've received. On that note, if you want us to build you an allied BC40, let us know, we are an allied dealer. We are actually going to be swapping this shock out because I don't really like lockouts, so we're going to get rid of the lockouts. Check out this uh, logo on the the rocker. They machine this in Arkansas also, which is really cool. I'm excited. To act I'm actually really excited to tear this apart so we can kind of see all the nuts and bolts of it. It actually came with the fork too. I had to change a heart on the color. I, I think the frame is so... Um, cool looking and adding the blue fork would kind of take away from the look of the frame. So we're going to do this black fork. So I got some uh, part. Now start. I said, let me know when you're ready. Right. You're just like, no warning. I'm no going. Warning. You're good. All right. So I got some carbon paste here. Um, this is going to be a full wireless build. And so probably the easiest part of the day here. Is just so we can get it in the bike stand. Cool. And then um, one, the, this is also kind of a strange, is she okay? Okay, now I'm rolling again. You're good. So, and then one other weird thing we're gonna be doing because... Um... She's just chatty. What is she talking about over there? She's just... Let me start over that part. <laughs> Okay, we're good again. Right. Totally wireless here. We're only gonna run be running one cable through the frame We're gonna go ahead and start removing these um, so rear lockout. We don't need that You okay? She's just helping with the build today. Yep. But, and I want to this is really nice. They like even label what's what so this is the rear derailleur. We do not need that one. All right, and then so gonna have one cable coming from the top there. So I got the blue cable tool thing. Now we can pull the brake through the rear end here. I just wanted to get all the noodles out of the way so we can like um, start putting the actual parts in it. Forgive me if this blade doesn't cut very good. I keep saying we're gonna get Just new Just remind blades. me to order a new one. There we go. Upside down so you don't spill it into the fork stanchion. Kind of out of breath, but <laughs> it was worth it. Okay. King Creek um, Hellbender Light headset. This is a uh, the lighter weight version of the Hellbender. And then um, this is the. Topper, there we go. Um, and then I got these fancy interlocking headset spacers from King Creek. And they actually sit in, there's a recess in the headset <laughs> specifically for them. Cool. All right, I'm gonna get the baby. Mm -hmm. Hey, stop losing it. Stop losing it. Oh, you're cute. Yeah, I put the a little bit. No, I know, I'm just talking to her right now. 
Bond Trigger RSL one piece handlebar. 150 by nine or by 70, negative 13. And it slots in between the bar and the headset there. It's a T25. And the reason I say these are tricky is because I want to make sure the logos line up. Cane Creek's in front on the top, so I think I'm going to follow that. Hellbender up front. Back. Now let's do that rear brake because that's the only thing that's going to really be any sort of complicated. Honestly, the bike's almost built, like straight up. <laughs> the axis parts just make everything so fast and easy to build. This is uh, my new G2 Ultimates. And I went with the silver because I thought it'd be cool to like kind of match the fork and the drop. So I'm actually going to remove the cable guide piece so that this is easier. Ooh, actually, that looks like two pieces. I feel like I might have done something annoying. I really don't want to lose that into the frame. What did I get myself into here? Is this supposed to not come out, maybe? Personally, I wouldn't mess with oh, it. No, it's it's like, falling. Yeah, that of that. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I'm happy that we get to show off this piece. So this is the cable guide. It's <laughs> stressful. It has some nice arrows on it to tell you what to do here. It cinches down the cables. It's uh, definitely like a, it's supposed to hold, it holds them in place so they don't like flop around. Should be able to just pull this through the frame. No problem. <laughs> but now can you get it back on well, without, <laughs> without losing it? I should be able to because there's a hose on it now. So the hose goes like that. Let's shove that back in there, come on. There we go, I got it. Bolt that back in, if I can. Oh, did it fall already? No, we're good. No. Okay, so we're gonna do it again. The okay, about this bike is there's not instructions. Totally blind going into this and we're gonna learn as we go. Oh. We're done, so I dropped it into the frame. What I want to see is if there's a... Okay, so let's drop the fork out and get that piece back. <laughs> now you're good, Chase? We're gonna be okay. I still think that top one might be able to be pushed out, but let's try it. We'll find out. Big Evo, yeah, it just comes straight out. I mean, yeah, I'm not even gonna... There's no point. Yeah. Anyway, we're gonna move on. I think it's good. <laughs> we'll put the fork back on. Yeah. It's my, it's actually, it, you know, it's it's my fault for only having um, one hose. So um, I use this handlebar already for a year and uh, I already kind of know where the brakes should go. So we're gonna cut the rear hose and get it all squared away. Um, let's just kind of imagine where that would be. I did find the tool. Get all the bits back on it. And hopefully this works and we don't have to bleed it. Seems pretty good to me. We'll have to find out later if it's messed up or not. And then let's see what we did. Let's lower it. Plenty of hose. Actually, I, I'd say that's about a perfect, perfect cut there. And I, I like I said, I'm unsure if this will need to be cut or not, but right now it's probably pretty close. So we're gonna start with it like this. <laughs> 
Cool, so I did. I shortened this hose off camera and now I think it's in a good spot. Could even have gone a little shorter, but I don't think it's a big deal, it looks good. Um, the brakes feel awesome. I don't think we're gonna need to get do bleep. I guess I'll put a wheel in the front, that'd be fun. Um, and then this is a 180 rotor. Um, because of the SID, just it only accepts a 180, which is really annoying to me. I wish it was a 160. I don't really need it. I have a Covey RSL wheel set. Um, it's like a 1200 gram wheel set. It's super light. I made a video about it earlier if you want to check that out. And I also have um, my favorite XC tire, um, the Kenda Booster Pro 2.4. This tire, I think, is just really good at everything while also being pretty lightweight. This is lighter than a Maxxis Recon Race, which is another tire I really, really like. And <laughs> Gentry's like, dude, look at, get a video of that. She's like doing some totally <laughs> struggles. I don't know what to call that. I mean, look at how good that looks. Like I said, this is, uh, to me, this is a, a masterpiece of uh, aesthetic for me personally. I think it's the best bike I've ever built. They ship it with the twist lock and everything. Um, I really just am not a lockout guy, so um, I went through the trouble of buying a shock that has a, a switch. I do like the switch. I will use this occasionally, but I don't want to have it on the handlebar, which is not me. You can actually, SRAM produces a part that you can just, you can swap out this piece, like see the two bolts there? They do not sell it in the USA. So instead of just swapping out one little piece, I have to buy a whole new shop so anyway this one and the other one will be sold online so if you want to hit up our pink bike we do sell a lot of used product on pink bike so hit us up there um i did i was able to find a exploded diagram of this bike um so um we're we're not going in blind anymore like we were so i'm just trying to get the bolts out of this got the shock off um i think it's cool to see this right now this the three it just bolts onto the rocker here flex to it where the back of the frame is flexing so that there's no pivot back here we need to get rid of uh or not get rid of so we got to pull out the hardware and then i got my du bushing tool here and just pushing it pushing the the bushing out it's not hard to do at all And then uh, these honestly just press in. So like getting them out is a lot harder than getting them in. This is a RockShox tool, by the way. I love this thing. I've, I've tried a lot of different DU bushing tools and I think this one's just the best one. Can't tell if ratcheting or just spinning it around is faster. I'm sure that Allied does not expect you to immediately take apart the suspension. So I'm probably the weird one in the room there. There we go. Got that on there. And let's get the, get that lined up as best we can. Yeah, it's going in a lot nicer there. Not a flip ship. It's definitely, there's no, come over here, Chase, and check this out. There's not, um, there's not a, a way, like there's only one way this goes in. Do you see how the carbon's blocking it? It doesn't have a, a geometry adjust at all. It, it just goes in one way and it goes like that. We got just a few things left to do. We did all the complicated things already. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the BB in. Uh, we have a BB Infinite, BSA, Dub. It's just a BSA threaded bike, and so it should just like not a lot to be worried about here. Just gonna thread it in, and we're gonna slap the crank in. XX1 uh, dub cranks. I actually have this design and the new design, and I thought that this one kind of matched the frame better. Chase Chase consulted me on it, and um, we have a 36 tooth chainring to go with this. It's a uh, already kind of put the other half in. Um, BB Infinite is just ridiculous. And I also have a Cane Creek aluminum preloader to help dial in the preload on this. Um, 
The only problem with BD Infinite is that it slides in and out so easily that you, it's like hard to get the threads on the crank started. There we go. It's like 50 newton meters or something crazy. And then uh, we'll get the preload out of there. I always hit it with a hammer on the spindle to push it out as far to the left side as you can. And then let's get it tightened. And then we'll put pedals on it and do the spin test. The HT T2 titanium spindle pedal. I use the small platform pedal on uh, bikes that are like purely for racing, but um, I, I think that this bike's travel kind of lends itself to have more of a um, platform and I, I, I can ride it without um, clipping in also because I'll probably ride this to work a lot. So yeah, I'll do like a spin test. I think that's pretty good. I would say that's like a winner there. It's still going. I don't see how that would be considered to be bad at any means. So I'm charging up the battery for the derailleur and I got my company sticker ready to go. Pairing the two up here. I always like like shifting it when it's like off a bike. It feels so weird. What? She's got a lot to say over here. Um, Please. How do I have my other bike? In. It's as far out as it can go. So, yeah. Bolt the lever on. Got a black chain. So yeah, I wanted to go with the, honestly, I think the copper would look really good. I have copper chains, but getting a copper cassette was not possible. And uh, I think the black looks really good anyways. So we just, no reason to wait another couple months to get a copper cassette. Actually what's probably gonna happen is Tram's gonna release a new drive train um, next year sometime, I think. I'll probably just end up with that and then it will be whatever color they come out with. So whenever I measure chains, I kind of do it not really by the books, which is okay. I put it in the two, in the smallest possible cog and basically, okay, so right there, if I cut it there, it'd be too sloppy and I can't make it reach there. So that tells me I'm going to cut it there. I always save these for some reason. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but they just go in my pile. Um, and then put the master link in. Two water bottle cages on a full suspension bike is kind of like a thing that is uh you have to navigate so with the silka tie cage that i'm using i had to put it all the way at the top and um, as you can see it is pretty much touching the frame right there and what i think i'm gonna do is try to angle it outward a little bit by putting some spacers against the frame and um, that should be a good solution to that problem otherwise i'm very happy that it fits two water bottles i mean that's kind of like a essential thing for me yeah there's no other like really great yeah. surface like flat surface um, and this is my a race bike so i definitely want to throw my name on it they charged our credit card for it um last week and they didn't send us a tracking number and i was like oh is it actually coming so i didn't know what they charged us for because we have a lot of bikes on order with them and i was like i hope it's mine and um lo and behold it just showed up today and i'm, I'm super excited to finally get my hands on this thing Oh my God, it's actually really light. 
That's so much lighter than I expected. It's 23.8. Oh my God. <laughs> That's so light. That is blowing me away right now. 28.5 pounds. 23.85. 23, 23. I literally thought it was going to be like 25, 26 pounds. Yeah, this is my new Ally BC40 uh, mountain bike. This is going to be the bike that I race. Um, I'm trying to make my next year almost exclusively mountain bike races, so hopefully I'll be racing this thing a lot next year. If you want one of these, please let us know. Um, we'll have all the links to our social medias and everything and ways to contact us down below. We've already started to... to um, we've already started to get some orders from people who saw videos. So seriously, thank you guys. Um, we really want to, um, keep sharing our love for doing cool builds like this with everybody. And, um, it's really amazing and kind of a dream come true to actually have people that are not local reach out and order products from us and have trust in me to make it the way that, or to make something cool for them. And so I really appreciate it. So we'll, we'll keep it coming. We have a lot more videos to edit and um, a lot more bikes to build. So um, we'll see you all in the next one.